And the immediate goal usually sounds something like this. I want to get rid of something. I got some symptom that I want to get rid of. The short-term goal is I want to get back to something I have to do, like work, right? And the long-term goal is I'd love to get back to something I'd love to do, right? So whether that's getting back to running or to the gym or skiing or just run around with the grandkids, whatever, there's a long-term goal. Hello and welcome to the Remarkable CEO Podcast, a show dedicated to chiropractors who want to transform their job into a business so that they can have a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life, not instead of one. With your hosts, Dr. Pete Camiolo and Dr. Stephen Franzen. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. Hey, I'm Dr. Stephen Franzen. And I'm Dr. Pete Camiolo. You have run straight into a two-part series on setting expectations and agreements. I hope you heard the last episode. If you didn't, you can double back after this one. There's really no order to listen these in, but man, Dr. Pete, such a powerful topic. This is one of those deals that like, if I get this right, if I get these, actually these two things right, if I can set good expectations and agreements with my team last episode, and now good expectations and agreements with my patients, my practice members, my clients, my customers, whatever you call them, man, life changes entirely. And, and I think the order and the sequence with which we're doing this is really important. So I want to emphasize this. Uh, there's an intelligence behind what we're doing, which is you got to get it right first with your team before you're going to be able to get it right with your patients. You can't expect the patient's to be committed if your team isn't committed. You can't expect things from the people that are coming to buy things from you from if you don't have that established for the people that are doing it with you. So we we went in this order for a reason because there's an order. And so if you haven't listened to that episode, I do encourage you to go back and listen to it. There's just so much in there that you can just walk away with and immediately upgrade your practice, you know, significantly just right away this year. So please do that. And, and what we're going to dive into today is just so important. This is where most of us want to live. You know, we want to think about our, our patients and that relationship. So day one, day two, day three, we're going to get into that today. So a lot of people are like, yeah, this is what I want to hear. But actually, probably we really needed to double down on the last episode. So I'm not, I'm not saying this episode is not as important. I'm just saying this is where most chiropractors actually think about, but they think less about the other side. As a CEO, you've really got to keep your eyes on your team. There's a commitment to that team that's got to get to another level. So yeah, this series is so important and, and uh, we're going to get into it. I mean, we're going to go through the process, the day one, the day two, day three. This is where you establish, and we talked about this in the last episode, that you know you get the practice you deserve. I mean, it, it, it's, it's okay, it's a little bit maybe harsh, you know, but you get the practice you deserve, you create your practice. And so this is why this process of day one, day two, day three is critical because if you look at your current practice and you say, I'm thrilled with the way things are. You probably could go back and say, it's because of this part. If you look at your practice, it's, I'm not, you know, it's not going well. My retention, my revenue, my, 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 my team, the, the patients. It's, it's like, well, I would go back to what we're talking about, the expectations and agreements you have established with your clients. Yeah, absolutely. And just to recap from, um, from the last episode, and we'll just set the table before we eat here. Uh, we're in the relationships business, right? So all business is relationship, right? We're in the relationships business, right? And we all want the same thing. We all want successful, productive, long-term relationship versus like short-term, stressful, dysfunctional relationships. Like nobody wants that, right? So we want successful, long-term, productive relationships. And if we look back across the our history, look across the landscape of all your relationships, pick out the ones that you would consider successful, long-term, and productive relationships and tell me that you can see these two things present in all of them, right? Number one, expectations, number two, agreements, right? So number one, transparent expectations and honest agreements, right? So we should be seeking this out. We should be looking to achieve this with all of our relationships, especially with our team from the last episode, but here with our patients as well. I mean, I think you're like me, you're like Dr. Pete. We all want to have long-term successful and productive relationships with our patients, right? So we don't want short-term stressful and dysfunctional relationships with our patients. So we can't leave this to chance. We have to set this up so that it's a system. We have to make sure that there are systems, steps, processes, procedures, scripting that will ensure the best chance of us establishing expectations and agreements. I love it. And, you know, as we were kind of talking through this prior to this episode, uh, we were talking about the the process really is, is there's, there's two parts. There's the, there's a breakout and then there's a break in and that's, that's what we're going to get into today. And I, I kind of mentioned Dr. Steven. And so I said, if you get the breakout right and the break in right, you avoid the breakup. Yeah. And, and again, the thing is most relationships ends in a 
breakup, right? And, and you talk about your clients, you know, how many, what's the percent of people that get, get under chiropractic care, active chiropractic care and remain and stay. You had a, you had a PVA of upwards of you know, three, 400, right? It was something like that. I mean, yeah, over three. But if you look at, if you look at the average, you know, practice, you know, maybe, maybe 10, maybe 12, maybe eight. I don't know. So it's, it's one of those things where, again, it goes back to your vision. So you, you have to get clear on your vision. Your vision has to be personal. It's yours. Like you can't borrow ours. You have to have your own, but you had a clear vision doc. I had a clear vision and I created the, the practice that I visualized. I created the practice that I, um, that I allowed to happen, right? What I, what I allowed to happen. Cause some, I made compromises and I had to deal with the consequences of that. I did. I, I remember I would let this person come on board and we let this slide and that slide. And next you're like, well, my team would just look at me as Dr. Pete, you let that, you know, you said it was, it was fine. I was like, you're right. You know? So my heart was bigger than my system or heart was bigger than, you know, and, and then we kind of suffered for that. You know, we were tr- struggled through that. And that's part of the life cycle. I mean, that's, you're going to go through that in business, but what this is going to do is create a, you know, guardrails around the relationship with your clients, which cr- protects your team. It protects you. It protects your culture and it creates an environment of healing. You talked about that um, in the last episode at the end when you talked about the new um, new team member orientation. We talked about this is a this is a place for healing, and healing is a very sensitive thing. And and that again goes back to this conversation here. Yeah, and I want to remind everybody that um, Dr. Pete aren't on Mount Olympus, you know, pontificating, right? So we're not broadcasting like we did it perfectly, never had any of these stresses and strains, didn't make any of these mistakes. Here's the truth, guys. We made all of these mistakes, right? And we love to say we, we only teach from scar tissue. We teach yeah. from pain, right? So we did this wrong eight ways to Sunday, finally figured out, was able to reproduce it thousands of times successfully. Now we're teaching you guys how to do it to save you the pain, save you the stress, the money, et cetera, right? So so, you know, ultimately at one point I found myself in the practice saying, you know what, I've got patients that I'm taking care of. I'm delivering great chiropractic care. They're getting great results and they're leaving. Man, what is wrong with these people? <laughs> right? And what I recognized in my frustration was I was the common denominator. <laughs> so I had to turn the lens around and say, what's wrong with me? And what I was missing was the, the fact that I hadn't come to grips with the truth, right? And the truth was that these people have been brought up in a paradigm that's taught them the absolute opposite strategies for staying for staying healthy, never mind getting their health back. So we had to rework the whole thing, right? So this was incredibly deliberate, right? So we had to sit down and get clear on our vision story and put words to it, right? If we recognize that, well, what we're doing is we're going to create a movement here in this office. Our practice is going to be a place where families can find a better way to better health. And we knew that our premise stated very clearly that the families who are in our practice are healthier and safer than the families that are not in our practice. Okay, great. So if that's our core underlying belief system, let's act accordingly. Because if we're going to experience success here, we need to align those things. We need to align our vision story. We have to align our core values and we have to align our behaviors. And that's where success lives, right? Any misalignment there leads to breakdown, resistance, friction, subluxation, right? So it has to all be aligned. So we set up our systems so that they were aligned with that. And our day one, day two, day three, one of the most important things we do is set up expectations and agreements for our patients. And that's what led to the 300 plus PVA. That didn't just happen. We actually set that expectation. Okay. Let's take a quick break and talk about Cairo matchmakers. Cairo matchmakers will help you find the right person for the job. If you're looking to hire the ideal chiropractic assistant, Cairo Matchmakers will help you find the specific person missing from your team so that you can get back to using your talents to serve more people. Or if you're looking to hire the ideal associate doctor, CMM can help. Cairo Matchmakers helps chiropractors like you find the ideal associate doctor to unlock your practice potential and get you the freedom that you desire. To learn more, go to chiromatchmakers.com. And now let's jump right back into our conversation. Yeah, so let, let's dig into it. So we're going to just scoot through the day one uh, and, and probably even the day two, and we're going to land here on the day three because this, really um, this is really where it lands here. But, but we, what we've got to realize is that they're all connected. So just because we go through day one and day two today, you know, we're going we're gonna to go a little bit more rapidly and we're going to press into day three. 
um, realize that you know we have multiple day seminars where we just focus on elements of each one of these days. So just so you know, we could spend 48 hours talking about this stuff because we do every single year, you know, multiple times a year. So there's no doubt, but day one really is about making that connection. It is, it's about the, it's about the connection you make with the patient that we call it the empathetic connection where, and there's so many elements to this that we can dive into, but very much it's about that. And with that connection that gives you the ability to establish a level of trust where now you can start to give some direction. Right. And so that is the, you know, the day one and, and you establish that. And then the day two, this is where you, you, you we, we call it the four agreements, right? So you make the four agreements say, hey, number one, here is a problem you came in with. I heard you loud and clear. I did, ma'am. I did, sir. I heard it. And you know what? I feel you. So I got the problem. I, I feel it. Second thing is, you know what? I heard what you said you wanted to accomplish. I, I heard it. I very clearly heard your, your immediate goal. I heard that. And you know what? And I know we, we dug a little bit and you told me where you want to go light, light, you know, long term, your life, how this is affecting your life. You know, we call it the life effect. We, we talk through that. So that's clear. Are we, are we good with that? Yep. Right on track. The next thing is, hey, based on this, um, you know, what you've got as far as the problem and your goals uh, and the findings that I have, here's my recommendations, you know, and that's where we start getting into you, you are the authority. And this is where we're beginning to say, okay, this, if, if they're moving along with you and they're continuing to agree, yes, 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 you're getting this. Yes. Cool. Now. Okay. So let's talk about what it's going to take to get there, right? That's the path. The path is like, hey, you right now you're here and you want to go here. So here's the map. And, you know, just like when you press in your GPS, there's a few different routes to get there, right? You could go this line, this line. This one's 41 minutes slower, you know, whatever. So we, for me to do my best work, for you to get the best results, for me to do my best work, this is my best recommendation. So we give you your, your best recommendations. That's the third thing. That's the, that's the recommendations. That's the plan or the path. So we get you there. Are you good? Are you good with that path? Let's agree to that. Yes. Then the last thing is the plan. The plan. This is where we're talking about finances. We are. So the time commitment is very much linked to the, the path. And then the plan connects time to money, right? So that's that. So Doc, Steven, I'm going to drop it there yeah. to you. So we're, we're, we're fast forwarding this super yeah, fast. No, I'm going to circle back because I okay. know that there's people that are like trying to write while they're driving and they're going to crash their cars <laughs> and they just pulled over to the side of the road to write that down. So just to recap and reiterate that day one, day one is about connection and discovery, right? So like Dr. Pete said, we create a connection with a human being, right? We slow down to speed up that empathetic connection establishes trust, right? So once they feel they've been heard, then they will, they're will they ready to listen, right? Then we go through the discovery process, which is the consultation and exam. Then we go into day two. Day two, day two is when we do our report of findings, recommendations for care and financials, right? And first adjustment. So day two really is about what we call the four agreements. Remember, this is about expectations and agreements. The four agreements are number one, agree on the problem. Number two, agree on the goal. Number three is agree on the path. And number four is agree on the plan, right? So problem, goal, path, plan, right? That problem is the life effect of their health's gone sideways and it's screwing up their life. They can't do the things that they have to do and things that they want to do. So you've got to get them to tell you that, right? And you have to have an agreement around what the problem is. The problem's not the symptom. The problem's not the subluxation. The symptom is the chief complaint. The subluxation is the cause the problem is the fact that their health is sideways and they can't do the things that they want to do and have to do. That's why they're sitting in front of you, right? So you've got to agree on the problem. Then you agree on the goal. What are you trying to get accomplished? And I know that you've, you, you, as you're taking notes right now, I want you to write these three things down. Every new patient that's come into your office, they always have three goals. They have an immediate goal, they have a short-term goal, and they have a long-term goal. And the immediate goal usually sounds something like this. I want to get rid of something. They got some symptom they want to get rid of. The short-term goal is I want to get back to something I have to do, like work, right? And their long-term goal is I'd love to get back to something I'd love to do, right? So whether that's getting back to running or to the gym or skiing or just running around with their grandkids, whatever, there's a long-term goal. So I want to get rid of something. I want to get back to something I have to do, and I want to get back to something I'd love to do. So now we've just agreed on the goals. And to use Dr. Pete's GPS analogy there, that's like point X, Y, and Z. So my problem, I'm on point A. My goals are point X, Y, and Z. Okay, now the brain kicks in like a GPS and says, okay, so how do I get there? That's called the path, right? So they look to you as the expert and they say, are you the expert? Can you help me? What do I need to do? 
what they need to do is follow your recommendations for care, right? That's the path. And in the remarkable practice system, we teach, hey, our recommendations for care are based on two things, your goals and my findings from the examination. So your goals, you tell me what you're trying to accomplish. I'll do a series of tests and those test results will tell us exactly what you need to do to get what you want. Such a beautiful script, right? So it makes it all about them selecting what they're trying to accomplish. And the exam results, they just simply tell us what they need to do to get what they want. That's the path. So then we have to agree on the path. And then it's the plan, which is the financial plan, guys. It's just how you're going to pay for it, okay? Very easy. How are you going to pay for it, right? So problem, goal, path, plan, the four agreements. Beautiful. I mean, we could just stop the the episode right here just because this is this is enough, but that's not even the theme of our of our episode. But those are four agreements. So we talked about expectations and agreements. So we've made the agreements. So now day three, they come back and we are orienting them, right? So they're going through and they're going to be onboarded here. So you've got the new patient going to, through this process. So let's talk about this. We call this the break in. So we got the break out from the day two, and then they go through the break in. So this is why, again, I talked about this, to avoid the breakup. So some of you were like, if we just did that in our practices, we, this we would double. Great, <laughs> yeah. But, but if you don't do the next step, you're gonna end up still with a lot of breakups and you're gonna have a lot of sore, broken hearts, you know, type of thing. So this is how do you prevent that. So don't, don't miss this. If you just do that, you're like, enough. I'm turning the podcast off. I got it, I'm good. You don't have the full story. So don't blow it. <laughs> yeah, don't blow it. So next part. So that's the break out, the break in. So now in meaning come on in. Like you're in. Like let's do this. You're right. committed. You've invested. You've financially invested. You've agreed. So we made agreements. You're invested. All right. So here's what to expect. Here's right. what you can expect from us. And here's what we expect from you. So this is a two-way street. There's expectations and agreements. And we, we both have them for each other. So we have, it's not like it's all the patient. Oh, it's expectations, like agreements for you. No, no, no. This is what you can expect from us. This is what we, we've agreed to. This is what we expect from you. This is what you've agreed to. Are we, are we in agreement on that? that? That's what's happening. So it's, it's both sides. Yeah. So we ended our day two at the, in, in the remarkable practice system, the report of findings, recommendations for care, financials, and first adjustment. And we break them out to do that, right? We break them out individually. So you break them off into a consultation room and you discuss the financing and the schedules, et cetera, right? So that's the break out at the end of day two. When they come back on day three for their second adjustment, before they go back to have their second adjustment, we do what we call a break in. It's almost like breaking in a baseball glove, right? So you do the break in, you broke them out at the end of day two. Now you break them in on day three. And this is where you go over the office policies and you do patient training. Okay. This is where you go over expectations and agreements, right? So remember, we're trying to set up successful, productive, long-term relationships. So we're not going to leave that to chance. We're actually going to create a system and a process for it, right? So why day three? Why don't you just do it at the end of day two? I'll tell you why. I used to do it at the end of day two, right? So here was my experience with that. Everyone was overwhelmed. Think about what happens on day two. People come back, patients come back, and number one, they're already, they have some level of anxiety because they don't know what's going to happen, right? So they're going to hear the truth about what's going on with their spine and nervous system. They're going to see their exam results. They're going to hear from you your recommendations for care. They're going to hear the financial, and all of this is big, right? Every part of this is big. They hear the financial commitment they have to make, the time commitment they have to make, the financial commitment, the energy commitment they have to make. All of these are big and lots of detail. So they're learning new things and they're hearing big things, right? With a lot of detail. And all of it's emotional. And then they receive their first adjustment, right? So this is a big deal. I hope it is in your practice. I know it is in ours. So it's like, that's a big deal. So all these big things are happening, right? And then as we drop them off at the front desk or send them up to the front desk, which is way worse, yeah. as we drop them off at the front desk, we hand them to a team, uh, their eyes are glazed over. The ears are totally shut off, right? They are totally checked out. And it's like, hey, team member, why don't you um, teach them how to be an excellent patient here forever, <laughs> right? It's like they stopped listening 10 minutes ago, guys. You don't want to try to train them how to be ideal patients so you can collect ideal patients when they've stopped listening to you 10 minutes ago, right? So what we did was we pulled all of the weight of the administration piece of that, anything that was not converting the patient, we pulled that off of day two. And that's a relief for the patients and it's a relief for your team right? Mm -hmm. So now when the patients come back on day three, they have the team's undivided attention. They're now speaking to a person who's actually committed to care, right? And they sit down with them knee to knee and they teach them how to be an ideal patient. 
they teach them about expectations and agreements. Yeah, I mean, this, this is gold and, and we're not going to dive too much further into this. We're going to, we're going to, Bring, wrap this up, but I'll tell you if you know, if you need and want and desire more information about this, and this is something that you desire, hit, hit us up, message us. I mean, this is this is what we 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 do. This is how we help you know chiropractors. And I'll tell you this this conversation, doc, that we we're having right now is is one of the things that you know docs who who we work with with their businesses and their practices where they're seeing you know significant changes in their in their practices is because of of these types of discussions and conversations and the systems and the processes and the scripting and the 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 real organization behind how we train and do this in, in the remarkable practice. So, you know, it's called the remarkable practice because you can have a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life and not instead of one because of all of this, right? Because there's expectations, because there's agreements, you have the I, I ability to have a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life and not instead of one. It doesn't happen by accident. It happens on purpose. Yeah. And, and Dr. Pete, you're like me. And we're super clear what a remarkable practice looks like. And a remarkable practice is stuff full with a remarkable team and remarkable patients, right? Yeah. So those remarkable patients are really partners, right? So what we teach our, our patients right from the get-go, right during this breakout, excuse me, right during this break-in, is that chiropractic is a done-with-you, not a done-for-you program, right? Mm-hmm. So this is a partnership. Okay. I'd love to be able to do it for you, but I can't. I want to do it with you. We're excited to come alongside you and help you get the results you want and help you reach your health goals. That's a very critical thing to say to people. You're setting up expectations and agreements by defining your relationship. Okay. I'm your health coach. I'm not just your adjuster. So listen, there's an ascension that we go through as chiropractors. If the, on the lowest level, and it's still beautiful and honorable, is the person that delivers adjustments. You're the adjuster. Okay, at that point, you're an adjuster. Okay, if you want to go next level, the adjuster who teaches their patients to think differently and changes their paradigm by sharing the truth and sharing the principles of chiropractic and changing that person's paradigm from outside into inside out, you've just become their chiropractor. And if you want to go from chiropractor to health coach, this is where you give them recommendations, you set up expectations and agreements, and you hold them accountable. And that's really where all the results live. And, you know, to make this practical, expectations are things like, let's be clear on recommendations for care. Let's be clear on visit frequency and what that's based on. Let's be clear on office visit momentum and rhythm and compliance and following my recommendations for care. I tell patients, listen, I don't make suggestions. I make recommendations. A GPS system doesn't make suggestions. It it says turn right, go 1.4 miles and take the exit, right? This is, if you want to get where you're trying to go, you need to turn right in 1.4 miles and take the exit, right? Otherwise, we're going to be rerouting and you're going to be doing a big U-turn and you're going to be off track, right? So at the end of the day, you've got to set these expectations and agreements, these office policies. You, if, you're, if you do a new patient orientation, man, I hope that's one of your office policies. The next step for you is a new patient orientation. So we create the space and time for you to be able to have your breakthrough, for you to be able to have your paradigm shift. So you start thinking differently. So you'll start acting differently. You teach them what it means to be a patient in the office, that we show up on time. We don't show up early. We don't show up late. We teach them about flow into the practice, like going into the hot seats or the relaxation center, how to get on the table and off the table, what to do with all their gear and the crap they carry in their pro- pro- pockets, what they set their expectations for how long it takes to deliver an adjustment, right? From, on the front end, you should be teaching people that, listen, the adjustment itself is not the process. The adjustment starts the process. Your body does all the work between the adjustments. It's like the difference between turning a screw with a screwdriver and turning on a bathtub at a faucet. When you turn a screw with a screwdriver and walk away, the work has stopped. The adjustment is more like turning on the bathtub and turning on the water and let that water flow. That's the adjustment. The adjustment itself starts the process. It is not itself the process, right? So they understand what's happening between adjustments. You teach them the adjustment only takes a second or minutes or however you do it. Set their expectation. Tell them about communication. We don't do consultation in the adjustatorium. We're focused on finding subluxation and adjusting and teaching. It's not a time for consultation, right? Set the parameters, the rules. Make sure that they know that you're expecting questions and that's why you have them coming to the new patient orientation. Make sure that they understand that you're going to be doing progress reports every 12th visit. Make sure that they understand that you have time for consultation that they can set up anytime. But in this adjustatorium, you've got to help me stay focused on the human being under my hands. 
And you want me focused on finding subluxation and delivering excellent care, not answering your question or thinking about the last patient's question, right? So Dr. Pete, there's so much to this. It's such yeah. a rich conversation. And, uh, you know, I just want to say this before we wrap, because I know we're going to wrap in a second here is some of you are sitting there going, oh my gosh, that's that what you said before about there are no bad children, there's only bad parenting. I get a whole, bad, whole bunch of misbehaving patients in my practice right now. What do I do with those people? It's easy, have them killed. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> like, you don't want to kick them out. You want to take ownership over it. Yeah. And you want to recognize, listen, you know, my pastor said this once, we're one awkward conversation away from fixing every jacked up relationship in your life, right? So we know this to be true. There are patients you need to sit with and set and, and sit down and have a and have a new expectations and agreements conversation. Sit down and give them a chance. Take that yoke upon yourself right now, right? So you'd be like, yeah, you know what? I you don't get what you want, you get what you tolerate. And I've tolerated this. I've allowed this relationship to evolve, regardless how it started, right? This the relationship you have right now is the one you've tolerated, right? So I'm just gonna encourage you right now. We've all been there. We we you will probably be there again. You, every, there, there's every one of us has to, we're, there'll be a season in our, in our practice where we're going to have to say, you know what, time out. It's time for me to, to start harangling some of these difficult children, get them into a consultation situation and set up new expectations and agreements. Yeah. I mean, this is just, this is just so much gold doc. And, um, as you were going through it, I know that as, as, as our listeners were listening, they were just thinking, oh my gosh, these are all the things I need to be saying, you know, on, on my day three. And so, I just encourage you to, to listen back to this episode and listen through you know, what Dr. Steven said. Because here's the thing. If you go back to the previous episode, all the things that he just said, he doesn't say. His team says it. That's what's the difference. See, a lot of you are thinking, I got to say all this. Maybe you are, maybe not. But no, this is, this is all is enforced by the team. In other words, the team, the expectation and agreement that you make with your team is that you make these expectations and agreements and you enforce them with the, the, the the customers, the clients. So you see the difference as a CEO and an owner operator might even think about this. I just wanted to point that out as we, as we wrap up and, and, and also just let you know that, you know, we're here, we're here to support you and serve you, serve you in any way we can. But if you're getting a lot of these episodes and you're finding this to be something of great value to you, we'd love to hear from you. Um, we'd love for you to uh, comment uh, on our social posts that we do. If you're, if you're listening and notified through there, we'd love for you to also uh, leave us a review, a five-star review. We love five stars and we love to hear how this is impacting you and how you're finding value in it. So if you haven't left us a, a, a five-star review or, and or uh, you know, a testimonial, how this is positively impacting you, we would love to hear from you. If it hasn't had that effect on you yet, keep listening, keep tuning in. We're here every single week. And again, we're honored to be journeying with you. This again concludes uh, this two-part series on expectations and agreements. And uh, we're thrilled uh, to have journeyed with you. We look forward to our next episode. Until then, take care, everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. Remember, what the world needs now is chiropractic. And what chiropractic needs now is more successful chiropractors. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, share with a friend, and leave us a review. And if you'd like to connect with us personally, direct message us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. Now go and be remarkable.